those Wranglers? Yeah. Yeah or heck yeah. Heck yeah. Heck oh, yeah. <laughs> Always have been. Always have been. That's what I thought. Hey, I'm Brian's Mobile One. I've teamed up with Wrangler Rigs Workwear. They've sponsored the clothing that you'll see in this video. And we're going to be doing a little work outside. Why outside? Because oftentimes things like this don't fit in the garage. And if they do, your wife complains about the driveway when you're done. Alright, moment of truth, full disclosure. Uh, I like these because it's soft. It's nice, it's comfortable, but it's also warm. I really like the pockets. The cargo pockets are fantastic. Uh, my pocket knife, I don't have to carry it in one of these lower pockets. I've got it up high where it's uh, ready for opening packages or doing whatever I've got to do. I like that. Uh, but the other nice thing about this whole uh, warm ripstop lifetime warranty kind of stuff is that it's durable. Uh, so anyway, I've got a buddy with a skid steer needs some work. Let's do some work. After all, that's where the name Brian's Mobile One comes from, is a mobile auto repair that I've done for years before YouTube. So let me show you what I'm working with. So this skid steer is a 1997 ASV Posi Track. Um, there's a number, I'll leave it down below, it escapes me at the moment. Uh, but these tracks actually worked out to be really high maintenance. Caterpillar bought the track design from the company and uh, you know it's pretty simple but it takes a lot of maintenance especially if you get into rocks and things of that nature so what we're gonna do is we're gonna tighten the bearing here we're gonna tighten the belt I've got this open so that we can work with that there's just a lot of little things that need to be done like I say we're gonna find some stuff that's loose and tighten it up um, this alternator I actually put a new belt on it recently due to the rough nature of the grit and everything the belt wears it sits a little lower in the groove and so it makes it loose. So the first thing we do is identify the bolts to loosen. There are these down here and this one up here. It's not hard. Just get a half inch wrench. Get on here and switch that. These are through bolts so you got to hold one side of it. Once it's loose, let's switch this back, turn this one over. <clears throat> but you just pull back on it, pull out all the slack, and then just allow, you want like maybe a half inch of deflection or movement on that is all. And then I'll tighten the tension one down first. And that'll kind of hold you like a bookmark. And then you go back through, tighten these guys down. So the main symptom that we got from this was overheating, but you could also have a squealing or a screeching on startup when you have the most demand on the alternator, uh, but you could also have a problem with the charging system not charging because the alternator was slipping. Uh, you should not be able to move the alternator easily when you've tightened it. So the hard thing about this situation is that it wants to move all over the place and it's been warned where you've got a little you've got a, not a little you got a lot of plate going on there uh, but there's a plate of the wheel and then there's a plate on the back side of the bearing you can see it on this other side here so what we got to do is we got to get this tightened down I like to use one of these little impacts to make that happen reason being is that you can you know in and out like a clownfish out of an anemone you can just kind of line it up get it to where it's just right, back it off. So the idea is you want it to be perfect. You want it to be right in the middle so that it, the wheel's not doing one of these numbers. That's just going to cause it to work loose again. So I go to the opposite side. Now, again, all of these have to be loose for this to be doing what it's doing. Uh, so I'm going to go to the opposite side of the new bolt that I put in. I'll get this one started in there. You don't see that it's cold, but you can see where I've been wiping my nose. Anyway, we'll work it around to the opposite side and just work in the star pattern. There we go. 
doesn't turn as easily because it's not taking up all the slack to the top. Boy, that's a whole lot better than it was before. These pants are pretty comfortable. They've got these little things at the bottom where you can really see that they're double layered. But any junk that gets in there just falls back out again. And the rip stop, you see the little lines like what you have in a paraglider or a parachute. If you rip it, it doesn't continue to rip. These have a lifetime warranty, so you don't have to be shy about getting in there and working with them. They're work pants, they're made for it. Well, I see a cool trick for getting the bearing caps off of these things. You see that the bearing's really loose on this. For whatever reason, they just work loose. There's just a lot of vibration. So what you can use is you can use a oil filter pair of ice grips. And it's like a bearing buddy in that you just clamp it on and go to loosen it. But they just never want to come loose. And you can bust a knuckle if they do come loose hitting it on one of the other components or the idler wheels. So what I do is you can either have it hit on the next wheel over, or in this case a chain case. That's kind of a fun thing to say. Uh, but you just rotate it around until your tool hits, and then rotate it. It takes a little doing, but it loosens it up. See, it's getting looser. trying to make this look easy but sometimes with some jobs they're just hard <laughs> it's just the way it is so we've got that all spun off I'll let you look at it so on this side you have a little grease or grease fitting on this side you got a bunch of packed grease but you look you see the threads some fine threads so what you do is just take a paper towel get it to where you can see about where the hexagon is for the nut I think this one hasn't been accepting grease. I mean, you pack it to it, but if it doesn't go in, it's hard to know because you get it feeds back any way you look at it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the cap, and we're going to just kind of clear some of this grease mud, get it to where we're on the back of the zerk, and just see if there's any hard tar deposits. Clean those off. Oh, 27 millimeter. Yeah, it's just loose. It's all okay. Yeah, it's really loose. Yeah, that bearing shot. That's unfortunate. But sometimes they work loose. Sometimes you just start getting grease. It's hard to tell. We'll pull this one off and order a new hub for it. You see there's just a spindle there. Here's the spindle for it. If you don't replace it at this point, um, you run the risk of losing the spindle. This is what they look like on the back. And on the front, you can see the threads where the cap was. This is one of those jobs that you're just on your knees for a long period of time. So it's nice to have that double reinforced uh, fabric that you get on the Wrangler rigs work where I don't know why products always have to be such a tongue twister but if there's a tongue twister product out there I'm the spokesman for you apparently all right no difference better to find this now than when we get more of that white stuff bonus footage at the end
love the little screw that they have in the R. That's pretty cool. And I look good again. It's time to take a nap on the modern gas can.